And the next result is وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبِ When the ruh awakens, when the ruh is revitalized, it wants to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to its real source. كُلُّ شَيْنْ يَرْجِعُوا إِلَىٰ أَصْلِهِ This is the saying of the Arabic language. Everything wants to return to its own source. The source of this ruh is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it is awakened and when it has been revitalized, it wants to be dearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my bondsmen, ibadi, ask you about me, find me kareem. Tell them I am very near to them. I am not far off. I am very close to their hearts. I am nearer to them than their jugular veins. I am with them wherever they are. Huwa maakum ena maakuntum. He is with you wherever you are. I respond to the invocations. I respond to the prayers, supplications of my bondsmen. Where and when they call me, where and when they pray me, I listen to their prayers. I accept their prayers. I respond to their supplications and prayers. Now this is the other aspect as I told you today that the relationship between Allah and his bondsman is two-sided. Faskuruni askurkum. Remember me, I will remember you. If you mention me in your heart, remember me in your heart, I will remember you in my heart. If you mention me in a gathering, I will mention you in a much higher and better gathering. Gathering of the Malaikatul Muqarrabun. I will mention my bondsman, my such and such bondsman, is mentioning me, he is remembering me, he is preaching my word, he is teaching my and conveying my message. So I will be mentioning him. In the same way here, if you want that I should listen to your prayers, if you want that I should accept your prayers, if you want that I should grant your requests, you should also listen to me, you should also hearken me, hearken to me, you should also respond to me, you should also accept my commands. So they should also listen to me. They should also respond to me. They should also have faith in me. So that they are led aright and they go straight to the final destination when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them. There will be a mutual pleasure pleasure of both. Allah will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, the two-sided bilateral relationship. Radiallahu anhum wa radu Now this ayah has another aspect of importance. And that is that this is the biggest magna carta of the rights of human beings that was given to humanity 1400 years ago. Otherwise, human beings were at the mercy of people who said to them, well, we are intermediaries between you and Allah and your God. You have to please us before you can place your, your applications and your prayers and your wishes and your requests to Allah, to your God. All the peers, all the pundits, all the pujaris, you know, this is P. Everywhere you will find this word, peer, pandit, pujari, parohat, pope. All you know, it's from P. And these, they have been exploiting humanity. Actually, they have, this is the biggest exploitation. One exploitation was in the economic field through the landlords, through the feudals, through the kings. They are extracting taxes from the people. People are working hard in the fields. But when it is harvested, the lion's share is taken by the landlord or the feudal, the lord. And the part, biggest part goes to the king. So these were the two exploitations. The political exploitation of man and the religious exploitation of man. You have to present here something. That is why in the in that, you know, temple of uh, Somnath, you, you, the amount of wealth, gold, that was gathered over there. Where from did it come? From people who had, you know, some applications, some wishes. They wanted to pray to their gods and they had to please you know, the custodians of that temple first. 
So that was actually, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has freed us. Piran kalisa ko kalisa se utha do. Kyo khali ko makhluk me hail rahe parde. There shouldn't be any distances between the creator and the created. They can communicate directly. You can communicate with me wherever you like. It's only you don't want to communicate with me. Because you are, you have a guilty conscience. Because you know you are earning haram. You are eating haram. You don't have the face to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have the tongue to talk to him. Because you know. Everybody knows what he is. He knows what I am. Therefore he wants you know some other ways. By hip or crook. You please some peer. And you play something on the on the grave of some big baliullah. And then all your wishes will be granted. So that is actually a very cunning way of exploitation. That has been given an end by this ayah. وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ عُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعِ زَادَانِ You need not go anywhere to call me. You need not please anybody to call me, to, to be able to communicate, communicate with me. Only whenever you like, but with sincerity. Make a firm resolve. I will respond to Allah's call. Always, I will listen to him. I will obey him. I will act according to his commandments. And then talk to him. He will listen to you. He will grant your request. By Zasala Kaibadi Anni Faini Kareeb, Udi Budavata Dai Zadad, Falyas Taji Muli. The second part of this covenant should be also fulfilled. They also should listen to me, hearken to me, and they also should respond to me, and they also should have real faith in me, La Allahum Yar Shadun, so that they reach the final destination of success.